This is how they make peanut butter. And this is how they make highlighters. So they were watching everyday items get made to see if we can make them better. And if we can't improve at least 10 of these processes, then I've got to make a weird face for you guys to make fun of me behind my back and bully me. Seems oddly personal. All right, first up, we're looking at how they make papayas. What are we making here? A loofah sponge. Oh, I didn't know this was made from a thing. Okay, so we got to improve this process somehow. The problem is, uh, first off, I didn't realize that some loofah sponges were actually made from a plant. And I really don't know how you would speed this up because then you have to, you have to get into like genetically modifying these to grow them. Think about this. Hold on. Think about this. If you want a bigger loofah, cause you're a bigger person, you genetically modify the loofah plant, whatever this is. And then you could have a loofah so big, you just rub your whole body on it. All right. I don't know if that one's a good improvement. All right. How do they make wallpaper? Wait, it's flavor paper. They burned the design on the screen. I'll tell you how you improve this right now. You, you take, take the humans out of the process, guys. Listen to me. You're really having someone come here and spray this down? No, you get a giant robot arm and it goes just like that and it's done. You don't even need a human. All right, we've improved this already. How toothbrushes are made? Okay, well, this is a pretty in-depth process. I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't think there's a way we can improve this one. What even is happening on screen? There's so much going on. Wondering what holds the bristles in place? Yeah. Wire. Wire? I mean, this is such a specific process. You'd, I've never wondered like, oh, how'd they get all those billions of brushes in there? Like, I, I didn't think of that. There's no improving this. Look at how satisfying it is. It's so fast. Now it's time for a brush cut. These blades oh. trim the bristles to about the same length. Maybe I could improve this one by having them pre-install them already cut. But that's probably also not good. This is crazy. I could never do that. Oh, this is cool. How to make paint from pollution. This is cool. Can it really clean up a century of worldwide waste? I don't think so. I really don't think you can turn that much waste into paint. You would have so much paint. You would be able to paint the entire state of Ohio this shade of poop brown. It's not a pretty paint. Have been making pigment out of this pollution for oh my over gosh. a decade. So you dry it, you kiln it. Well, I got to ask a question about this process, all right? It's pretty cool to see this all happening behind the scenes. But what I want to know is, if you're taking toxic waste pollutant, turning it into paint, are you removing the toxic part of it? Because it's still, it's still pollution. This is a really cool process though. I gotta be honest with you, it's pretty cool. All right, how can we improve this flow? How hard candy's made? How can we make this easier? Smells and touch and sight. But you also have to hear what's going on. All right, here's what I would do. First things first, I would get rid of all the people. All right, these candy makers are too attached to their work. All right, they, they put too much passion into it. This guy loves his job. Pretty slow at it. So I'm gonna replace him with all machine. We're gonna change this so it is pure mechanical, pure machines, no human beings involved in any of these processes. I mean, look how slow that is. You could definitely make some type of machine for this. I'll tell you what, it's very satisfying. Wow. Here's like another different candy cane. Let's see what they do with this. This looks like a freaking Crest toothpaste. They just took a giant toothpaste roll and made it big. And that's what sometimes takes years to master. Years. So I'm telling you right now, I'd come in here and I would absolutely whip this place into shape. Machines everywhere. There'd be one person working and it would be the janitor. His job would just be to clean the machines after they're done being worked. I'm telling you right now, that's a point for me. Rack it up on the scoreboard editor. How bubble gum's bubble made? Bubble gum comes in gumballs of all colors and sizes. Yo, I have not had a gumball since I was like eight years old. But for blowing bubbles, nothing beats the chewy, gooey pink stuff in the twist wrap. Hubba bubba. This is the blurriest thing. I cannot even tell what I'm looking at. It all starts with a gum base, the stuff that makes gum chewy. Okay. Traditionally, the base came from tree resin. Nice. Today, it's synthetic, made of plastics and what? rubbers. You mean to tell me that we used to have natural gum and now it's made of plastic? You mean all we're chewing is plastic? Is this why there's microplastics in my body? We're done. We're done making gum. No more gum. We went too far. We're too plastic now. As it begins mixing, they pour in glucose syrup, a sweetener. That looks because like more plastic. Liquid, it helps keep Keep the gum base soft. Oh, basically we're mixing sugar with plastic in red food dye. Is that really what it is? Ew, it's satisfying. Look at that. That is beautiful. I don't care if this is toxic plastic. I would chew on this now. So then you create some rolls out of it and then you take the rolls and make them into special shapes and then put the special shapes into wrappers. So when it, honestly, when it comes down to the workflow here, the process, the flow of it all, I don't see an improvement you can make except for one thing. And that is creating a bigger vault. This is a limiting factor. We take it and we make it a hundred times bigger, the size of an entire skyscraper. Hold up, I'm going way too far into this one. Never mind. we're moving on. All right, Heinz ketchup. Starting off with a big palette. That's what I love when I see ketchup. Really, not a lot of love going into this one, but I like the process. Basically, step one, start with ketchup. Step two, add high fructose corn syrup. Y'all know that'll kill you, but that's okay. We're gonna add it anyway. Put some vinegar, brine, and secret spices, and then just infinite ketchup is made. That's it. Skip the rest. Don't even show us the bottling because that's proprietary. That's it. That's all we got to see. You just made that more secret than any. I mean, the FBI shows more than what you just showed us right there. That's unbelievable. Look, here's what we're gonna do. The thing is, this is already pretty mechanical, pretty processed up here. I don't see a lot of ways to improve it. Maybe the next idea is we take this. And instead of putting it into Heinz bottles, we pipe it directly into people's houses. Because we can already pipe water in. So I don't see why Heinz can't start piping ketchup straight into your wall. You need some ketchup for your dog? Just squirt it off the freaking built-in Heinz sponsored ketchup wall that you're gonna install now. That's a process improvement. No more shipping. Oh, how Pringles are made. I love Pringles. They use a ratio of one-third water to two-thirds potato flakes. Really? Potato flakes? That sounds toxic. Using four tons of pressure. They roll the mix into one long potato sheet. Okay. So they're just instant potatoes. The chips get a coat of seasoning. 
Then do a backflip off one. They do a backflip, dude. Some engineer out there programmed them to do a backflip, and you expect me to improve this process? So this is an interesting one because they really, again, they have a great process. But there's a couple things I would do if I were to change this and make it a little more streamlined. Step number one: the tubes. All right, you can't get your hand down. We're gonna fix that by making the tube twice as wide. We're gonna put three times the chips in. Step number two: we're gonna fire everybody. How skateboard wheels are made? Ooh, I don't know how to improve this. That's a big old looking thing. Urethane liquid into the wheel mold. Do you say urethane liquid? Sounds like urethra liquid. It just sounds like you're peeing on it, but okay. The liquid starts to solidify immediately. Great. That's good. Solidifying the wheels. To complete the process. Fire them. Worker loads the polyurethane filled molds into an oven. Nah, and you're fired. them at almost 240 degrees Fahrenheit for 40 minutes. You couldn't get a robot to do this? Oh, we're putting some logos in the wheels. This seems like a waste of time. Who's looking at wheel logos? This picture of his daughter right here, you see that? This to me screams inefficiency. It screams he's a family man over a working man. We can't have that. Only photos we're gonna have are photos of wheels. I am taking over the world, guys, with these ideas. Hot dogs! Now, this is what I call a perfect. This is probably the first perfect process we've seen. High quality meat. Mix it into a mush. This, this is the American dream right here. There it is. Squirt that out. That's what I like to see. Pure profit. There is there is nothing but profit in these people's minds. Plastic in it. We don't care. Healthy. Don't care. Will it kill you? We do not care. That's what I'm talking about. This is just a pure profit driven business. Perfect workflow. We change nothing. Someone's going to take that out of context and cancel me, but honestly, I don't care. The blades chop the chunks into two and a half ounce balls to make small pretzels. Okay. Or five ounce balls for large pretzels. Again, I feel like the speed with which these wheels are moving, we could pump this up a little bit. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It's just two conveyor belts. belts squeeze them into 15 and a half inch long segments. Another machine now grabs the ends of each noodle and twists the ends over each other. Oh, that's pretty advanced. Them. Now, personally, I just leave it as a pretzel noodle because that in itself is a marketable idea. Like, hey, yo, let's get lover fellas pretzel noodles. Like, lover's noodles. You know what I'm saying? Like, you go out there, you get a lover noodle, and you move on with your life. I think it's innovative. Poured into a tank of latex. It's filtered through cheesecloth to remove any lumps. Well, that's interesting. You're using cheesecloth. I believe that makes cheese. Based on the name to make a balloon. Unique. Agitators at the bottom of the tank mix it up for 15 hours. 15 hours of mixing? That is so unnecessary and what a waste of time. I could make 10 billion balloons by the time you're done mixing this with my new workflow. We're not going to do any mixing. We're going to make only white balloons because it's not worth a 15 minute mix time. That sounded really bad, actually. Don't put that in the video. I'm dead serious. Don't put that. That sounded, that sounded bad. How marble pool balls are made. It looks messy. Wait, who's buying a pool ball made of marble? Marble. This looks so expensive. And then if it's got natural rock, is it evenly balanced on the inside? What would you do with it? I mean, it's not for actual pool, I don't think. It's just like a marble ball. I think it's like decorative. Wow, it's very pretty. I do like it. I do like it. I don't know what I would do to improve it because I don't really know what it's for. I, I feel like this is the type of thing you're like traveling like from America to England and you see this for sale and it's like European ball or something and you buy it. Like, yo, we got a European ball. You bring it back home and you realize like you just wasted your money because no one cares. That's like what I'm getting. Guys, I don't think I was able to improve enough of these. So I'm gonna make a really ugly face for you to screenshot and share with your friends and make fun of me behind my back. Bye.